Hello, you're watching Sideline on MNB World, an interview program that invites various guests for a conversation on an important theme. And today we have in our studio project coordinator of the International Development Law Organization, Mrs. Otten Toyanoro. Hello. Hi. Thank Hello. you for accepting our invitation. Thank you for inviting me for this interview. Otten Toyanorov has more than 19 years of experience in the development issues of Mongolia through several international organizations including United Nations Children Fund, Asian Development Bank, and International Development Law Organization. She holds a master's degree in international development from Western Michigan University. For the last five years, Otten Toy has been working on strengthening the child protection system. The International Development Law Organization, with support from the European Union delegation to Mongolia, is implementing a 15-month project to strengthen the child protection system in Mongolia. I would like to start our interview uh, from the project that is being implemented by the IDLO. And as we remember, in 2021, in January, the project titled Mitigating the Impact of COVID-19 by Increasing Children's Access in Mongolia mm -hmm. was launched. And it's been already two years since then. And what was the outcomes mm -hmm. of this project? Thank you. So thank you for inviting me for this interview today. So I also do remember the momentum we had the first interview with the, at the sideline in terms of introducing the objectives and the mm -hmm. expected outcome of the first phase of the mm -hmm. child protection program. Yes, it has been 18 months since the completion of the project. And I'd like to emphasize some of the key substantial outcome we have achieved during the first phase. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, it was the during COVID years and we had not only Mongolia, globally we all had these COVID restrictions and lockdowns during the three years. And But uh, through these uh, difficult times, we were able to achieve a lot of substantial results. Mm -hmm. One of them is to mention the nationwide training for the members of the Legal Committees for Child Rights. We were able to train almost 390 members of mm -hmm. these committees at the national scale from mm -hmm. 21 on IMAX and nine districts. Mm -hmm. So the Legal Committee for Child Rights is usually comprised of the heads of the courts and justice uh, system organizations like police, prosecutor and court decision um, making it agencies mm -hmm. and the heads of the schools and health organizations mm -hmm. and these committees are headed by the deputy governors mm -hmm. and it is one of the key child protection mechanism in Mongolia mm -hmm. to protect the rights of the children those who come in conflict with the law especially mm -hmm. when they come at the investigation prosecution and trial processes at the justice chain mm -hmm. so it was very important for these justice sector actors to understand the right of the children children and know how to work with children, especially mm -hmm. with children, those who are undergoing through these processes. Mm -hmm. So one of the, again, uh, the substantial result of the project was to train these members. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do it with a lot of uh, uh, collaboration with mm -hmm. government agencies as well as UN agencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, the trainings and workshops were the important part of the first phase of this project, right? Mm -hmm. And during those uh, trainings, and workshops, how many trainings were organized? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 390 members, it's a quite substantial number mm -hmm. in terms of organizing trainings. And we did a regional level trainings mm -hmm. in, uh, in western part in Hovda Aymag, in the mm -hmm. east in Hinti Aymag, and central regions in Lambatar, and as well as in Gobi regions mm -hmm. as well. So in one training sessions, we were only able to train like up to 40 people mm -hmm. in one instance. So itself, the training activities took, took us like almost uh, four to five months to complete mm -hmm. all these training activities in the field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, when we talk about the justice, we cannot leave without mentioning the legal framework. And since the launch of the project for the last couple of years, have there been made any improvements in the legal environment of Mongolia, especially directed to protecting children's rights? 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. So since 2017, Mongolia has made quite substantive progress in mm -hmm. terms of strengthening the legal environment mm -hmm. pertaining to child rights and child protection issues. For instance, the laws on child rights, the law on child protection, mm -hmm. the law on combating against domestic violence against women and children. Mm -hmm. But uh, during COVID years, as far as I remember, Ministry of Labor and Social Protection, also Ministry of Justice and Home Affairs endorsed several standard operating procedures mm -hmm. that are coming in regards to these oracular laws. Mm -hmm. For instance, the standard operating procedure for Legal Committee for Child Rights. Mm -hmm. So this procedure has been revised to include the deputy governors to lead these mm -hmm. committees at the national scale so that these committees are put in a political agenda and mm -hmm. so that they are more uh, properly advocated for increased bud state budget budget allocation. Mm -hmm. So I would say this was another step uh, mm -hmm. from the government side. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the main recipients and like the beneficiaries uh, target group of the project is children of course. Mm -hmm. And will there be any opportunity for children and youth below 18 years old to like in insert their voices and their opinions into the implementation of this project? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So during the first phase of the project, we did two uh, creative workbooks that are mm -hmm. tailored for children from 6 to 11 years of old. Mm -hmm. And that was more tailored to their cognitive development in mm -hmm. terms of speaking out the child rights and protection mm -hmm. services and any assistance available for them. Mm -hmm. So it was tailored in a very child-friendly manner. Mm -hmm. We included some illustrations, we produced animation videos, and we did include children themselves during the pre-testing process. Mm -hmm. So to engage with them, to see their own you know uh, views and opinions mm -hmm. how would they would want to see the workbooks uh, developed mm -hmm. so uh, in that sense we did include children as well as the training activities were tailored for children in the fields and a lot of uh, activities were conducted alongside with the children mm -hmm, i see mm -hmm. um, this is the first phase of the project uh, titled Mitigating the Impact of COVID-19 mm -hmm. by Increasing Children's Access to Justice. And now in 2023, IDLO launches the second phase of the project. Yeah. And what the second phase of the project will focus on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the name of the project? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So building on the results we had mm -hmm. during the first phase of the project, we now are able to continue these uh, good practices through second phase, mm -hmm. which is called Child Protection Enhancement Project. And this project is just launched almost last week, mm -hmm. uh, by the end of January. And we will still keep uh, strengthening the child protection system in Mongolia mm -hmm. through increased justice access for mm -hmm. children. And uh, in doing that, we will be keep working with the secretariat staff of mm -hmm. the Legal Committee for Child Rights across the country mm -hmm. through a mentorship program. We will work with uh, child, um, child protection actors. Mm -hmm. We will also work with civil society organizations, mm -hmm. children as well to address these persisting child protection issues that, that are happening in the cyberspace. Enhancing the child protection system and response mechanism is one of the persisting challenges for the child protection system strengthening in Mongolia. The severe impact of long-lasting COVID-19 pandemic has adversely affected on the ability of the legal committees on child rights to effectively function and address rights of the children in contact with law. Though the government of Mongolia has made considerable efforts to strengthen the child protection framework and expand resources available to children through the onboarding of additional legal committees and child protection officers, institutions require significant support in order to ensure these resources reach children in need. When you talk about like the issues happening in the cyberspace, do, do you mean like cyberbullying and uh, some like uh, contents uh, that are not dedicated to children? Exactly, right? exactly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things are happening 
since we have social media and mm -hmm. internet throughout the country mm -hmm. and the especially children become one of the first victims of mm -hmm. different uh, virus of uh, violations that are mm -hmm. happening in the internet in social media for instance ch those children those who are staying at homes they use internet and social media mm -hmm. without parental supervision mm -hmm. and control so parents also are not aware how to control and supervise their children's uh, utilization of internet, mm -hmm. internet time. So through this project, we will produce some uh, uh, workbooks mm -hmm. on how to promote this uh, proper use of internet mm -hmm. and social media among young persons, mm -hmm. and as well as also disseminating some video materials mm -hmm. through various social media, media platforms that mm -hmm. are existing in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're right, a lot of uh, child bullying and discrimination are happening, mm -hmm. but the child protection actors and service providers do not still have adequate methodology mm -hmm. how to prevent from such kind of mm -hmm. uh, uh, violation issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, these are like the works are more like directed to the adults mm -hmm. and when we talk about like bullying or cyberbullying issues, there are a lot of cases when uh, children themselves uh, initiate such bullying mm -hmm. and ostracizing, especially in high schools mm -hmm. or middle schools. So will there be any like programs uh, conducted among school children? Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the workbook that I just mentioned will mm -hmm. be distributed to school children. Mm -hmm. uh, we will mobilize school social workers mm -hmm. when distributing these workbooks, also delivering trainings for school age children. Mm -hmm. We also will be engaging with role models like young people who have been progressing in international online gaming sports. Mm -hmm. We will use these uh, role models to promote this netiquette approach. Mm -hmm. Netiquette approach is something uh, really promoting this proper ethics when you are presenting yourself mm -hmm. in social environment mm -hmm. and uh, just prevent from cyberbullying and discrimination mm -hmm. among children as well. Mm -hmm. Despite an influx of staff and resources, the system struggles to keep pace with reports of violence involving children. In the first quarter of 2022, over 16,000 calls to the 108 Child Helpline were recorded, of which 2,192 are under active investigation by the Authority for Family, Children and Youth under the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. Data from the National Police Agency similarly finds that only 46% of children in contact with the law received legal committees services in the first quarter of 2022. The IDLO project further will concentrate on improving knowledge of internet safety and netiquette by children. Netiquette refers to the guidelines that govern courteous communication in the online environment. The word comes from an abbreviation of Internet Etiquette or Network Etiquette. To address the online child protection issues among children and raise awareness among parents and caregivers, workbooks will be issued and other engaging activities are expected to be organized. How long the project's second phase will continue? The second phase of the project will take place up until uh, April next mm -hmm. year. So it is another 15 month project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the project is being implemented by the International Development Law Organization. And I'm really interested to know, will there be any other projects implemented uh, towards protection of the right of children? The International Development Law Organization is an international intergovernmental organization and it is one of the United Nations observing uh, organization in terms of justice, mm -hmm. justice chain, and it has uh, quite high technical expertise in uh, justice uh, research studies mm -hmm. and technical expertise in justice chain issues. In Mongolia, we have been operating since 2012 and have been implemented several various development programs mm -hmm. in strengthening justice uh, chain system in Mongolia. For instance, for the time being, we are implementing up to three projects uh, funded by government of uh, Canada and the US and European Union. Uh, for the IDLO organization, mm -hmm. 
For now, we have only this child protection program. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are many persisting issues around the child protection issues. And I hope uh, other organizations like UNICEF, Save the Children, World mm -hmm. Vision are always um, uh, focusing their um, priority issues on child protection issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for providing information about the IDLO and its projects. Well, that was the new episode of Sideline on MNB World. Today we had in our studio project coordinator of the International Development Law Organization, Mrs. Atentoya Naro. We'll see you next time with more stories and updates.